want to give some love to Emerson Hancock. What an admirable job he has done in the five spot this year. Filling in for Brian Wu, who also had a really good performance this weekend as he's getting it working his way back. He's probably going to debut against the Astros in a couple of weeks. But in his spot, Emerson Hancock has exceeded expectations. My expectations were sort of flat right in the middle for Emerson Hancock. I was hoping, you know, he would go somewhere between four and five innings in his starts and allow three runs and limit damage and overall just sort of try and keep the Mariners in the game and let the Mariners bullpen bring up the rear of it and close out the game and sort of use more arms that way. It has not been that way. Distance has not been an issue with Emerson Hancock, and he has really, he has fit right in in this Mariners streak of just excellent starting pitching over the last two weeks. So if you just pulled up his stats on baseball reference or fan graphs, it wouldn't look that pretty because he had one start in Milwaukee, which we know he got blown up. The Brewers hit him very hard. He exited that game early. Look at the other three starts he's had. If you combine Emerson Hancock's other three starts and throw out that Milwaukee start, his ERA right now is 311. That's your five guy. And, and when everybody's healthy, that's your number six guy. It's pretty good. 311 ERA in, his first, in, in three of his four starts. It's pretty good. And he's a guy who's working through things too. It's not like he can't get better as the season goes along. We just use the example of him facing the Rockies on Sunday in the second game of the doubleheader. And think of what he's up against. We just watched Kirby in game one. You know, he battled, but he shut the Rockies out for five innings. He clearly wasn't a hundred percent. I don't think Scott service wanted to use all of his high leverage guys in game one, but he ended up doing it. So Emerson Hancock is facing two things. They're playing the second game of the day. The bullpen is short, especially leverage arms. So no pressure. He's got to go out there and perform. And, you know, that's exactly what he did. He got hit around a little bit in the first inning. But after, you know, a Polanco error in the first and you went up a two-run double, he retired 18 of 21 batters and allowed three total singles the rest of the game. Like, that's bouncing back right there. That's bouncing back, even against a, a pretty bad lineup. Rocky scored four runs all weekend, but that's also a testament to the Mariners' pitching staff. He's throwing a lot of strikes. His stuff's not overwhelming, but he's filling up the strike zone and he is limiting damage. That's the best of what Emerson Hancock can do right now because he doesn't really have a swing and miss fastball. His changeup is good enough when he can locate it and his slider is fine. So when he gets to those, especially the secondary pitches, he can survive and certainly he has survived. I just recommend people don't look at his baseball savant page because you might, uh, might find a different conclusion for yourself. He's not walking anybody. He's throwing a lot of strikes, so give him credit yeah. there. You want to talk about his baseball savant page, his walk rate, very, very good. It's in the 89th percentile. Right. Well, the rest of it, uh, the the underlying numbers overall are not great for Emerson. I don't, like, how, how much of that is because of the Milwaukee start? Probably a decent amount, but it, it there's a lot of things not helping him, not striking out a ton of batters, and not get, not throwing a bunch of ground balls it's not not a whole lot of ground balls coming up a lot of fly balls a lot of line drives it's not a really good formula getting hard hit hard a little bit so that's all things he can go down there and work on in Tacoma we'll probably see Emerson Hancock again this season he's going to get one more start next weekend at home back at home against the Arizona Diamondbacks and then Brian Wu will be back in the swing we can imagine if Brian Wu stays healthy for these weeks but really man the expectations that we set for Emerson Hancock coming up here. I don't know if it was this. I, I don't think it was this. Um, and I think we've seen what we've needed to to feel confident when he's called upon again, because I think that's a when, not an if, that you'd feel pretty confident with him filling in. At some point, he's going to need to make more starts this year. We will see him back in the big leagues, almost certainly. And yeah, if Emerson Hancock's done anything for himself, he is without a doubt the first guy that's going to get called. If there's an injury, if they need somebody to start in a doubleheader, it's him because he's, he's earned that over both. I guess you can look at the couple starts he had last year, but really what he's done since then, and he's not perfect, right? You talk about, he doesn't get a lot of swing and miss strikeouts or something. He needs to still rack up more of, he needs to, you know, limit hard hit balls. That's a certainty, but he has done everything you could ask a number five type of starter to do. And yeah, he has things to work on. I think keeping his velocity up throughout the duration of a start will be something to watch in Tacoma too, because we've seen him hit that 96, 97 a bit, but it hasn't stayed consistent throughout a start. Often his velo goes down as some outings go on. So that could be something he works on when he gets down to AAA, assuming he's the one that gets moved off the roster when Wu's healthy. But 
if we're talking results, I, I want to say this in the right way. I am like, what have I talked about? I'm the high man on Brian Wu. I think Brian Wu's upside is crazy. But if you're just going to look at the Mariners record and the starts that Emerson Hancock has made, I don't know if through four games, the Mariners look that different with Brian Wu pitching these four games than Hancock. Now, long term, having Brian Wu is a is an upgrade, and there's no doubt about it because we know what he can do when he's at his best, and we know what his ceiling holds. But through the four starts that Hancock's made, I don't think the Mariners look all that different as a team record-wise now if it had been Wu pitching these games over Hancock. No, I don't think so. And now that Brian Wu is ramping back up and he essentially got the first few weeks of the season off on the injured list to now ramp up and start pitching again, I'm hoping we see this kind of length from Brian Wu as well because I like I don't know especially at the beginning of the season we would have seen quite the amount like the innings coverage from Brian Wu here early as we've seen from Emerson Hancock is that fair yeah because Wu's going to be on an innings limit now I assume Hancock is on some limit too right because he hasn't thrown a full season in a long time he had some injuries last year and the season before that we know he's been a bit injury prone in his career but I would assume as the season prolongs, you'll start to see Wu get stretched out. But his first couple outings, yeah, he may go four or five. That's fair. Before we move on to our next storyline, can we just touch on Wu for a second? I mean, holy crap. (laughs) Nine up, nine down, five strikeouts in his first rehab start. That was in Vegas. Do look like he hasn't missed a single beat. Obviously, they're going to give him another rehab start. But just watching that outing, because I had... I had both screens up on Sunday. I was watching Brian Wu starts. I was kind of flipping that game on and off. I would turn the Tacoma game on in the innings he was pitching while also watching the Mariners. And I'm sitting there being like, wow, like he's ready. I like, that's the irresponsible thing to say. And as a podcaster, I'm sitting here saying it, of course, they're going to give him another rehab outing to make sure he's all systems go. But watching what he did in that outing. Yeah. Like, like there's a reason I'm excited about Brian Wu. I can't wait for him to get back. It's the easiest 95 miles an hour I've ever seen, really. I mean, Effortless. it looks like he's soft tossing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it, we're, we're looking forward to it. And I, so I think it's what, May 1st against the Astros when he's scheduled to throw. Yeah. Or so May 1st is the final game against the Braves. It would be that weekend oh, in Houston. May so, 3rd against the Astros then, because they have an off day after that. Right. If, if he pitches that first game, yeah. Right. So it's like sometime during that weekend in Houston. I guess uh, I'll make one more point here on the Hancock topic. Is there any chance the Mariners would think about a six-man rotation for a little bit? Because I'm looking at the schedule. There's not a lot of off days in May. In fact, there's two. There's one on the 2nd, and there's one on the 16th. Not a lot of off days. Like, to, to manage the innings of Wu and Hancock, would they even think about it for a little bit? I think at this point it's more important to have those bullpen arms than to have an extra starter. I think it would be more valuable to the Mariners winning games than to have those extra bullpen arms than run with a six-man rotation because you can still control innings with a five-man rotation, even without the off days. You can control innings, especially with Emerson Hancock down in AAA. Now he does not need to throw his full pitch count every start. He can throw four, Mm -hmm. five innings, hard cap, not Mm -hmm. based on how well he's pitching. So So they can manage that no problem. And if they feel like... Once they get, so they do that with Emerson and then say they get near the all-star break and they're thinking, okay, we're going to, we're going to do the, we're going to skip Wu and give them essentially an extra week and a half of rest coming out of the all-star break, something like that. And they call Hancock up because they've been managing his innings at that point. Then that works out. And then you can sort of give Wu a break and get Emerson back into the fold. Something like that, I would imagine. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah, the Mariners' bullpen arms have been great, too, and you don't want to sacrifice those guys because they've been so valuable. It's just an idea to keep arms fresh and with not a whole lot of off days. But you're right. Likelihood is when Wu gets back, Hancock will go back to Tacoma. You'll see him at some point again this year. But seriously, shout out to Emerson Hancock. We didn't know exactly what he was going to bring to the table. He's been really impressive in three of his four outings. Or I should say he's he's pitched very competitively in those in three of his four outings. Like you said, he's exceeded expectations. and. I genuinely think his his changeup's a good pitch, and I'm glad he started to throw it more this year too because he didn't throw it a whole ton last year. You've seen the usage of it significantly increase up, and I think it's helped him. That changeup's a good pitch when he throws it. And the next thing for him, he's, he's just got to be able to find the sequencing to get to that pitch because he's not going to throw only changeups in an outing. That like mm. needs to find, like whether it be a sinker or his fastball, find some sort of effectiveness with those pitches to get to that changeup. 
Right. Right. But I listened to Pete Wordworth talk about on the top step, shout out our friend, Ryan Roland Smith talking about when is Emerson Hancock at his best when he's throwing his change up with, with command and with confidence. Like the Mariners really like that pitch that there's an organizational belief that that's a very good pitch. So it's, it's good. Shout out to Emerson Hancock. He's really done his job. 